Welcome to Dak Band Productions and welcome to Conahay Rail. But this time we're going to check out Conahay Rail traditional O gauge trains. So, with that being said, today's video is going to be about discovering the world of Lionel MPC. Now, I've seen posts being made on Facebook groups how the Lionel MPC era was junk, it wasn't that great. Um, but yet these people never owned it or had it, and I don't understand how you could come up with an opinion on something and never own it, or know anything about it. So, we're going to rediscover the role of Lionel and PC. Now, uh, I understand uh, that the Lionel post or is by far the most popular uh, type of trains that are sold after by collectors and those who like to run line out trains. But for me it's different because I didn't grow up in that time period. I didn't grow up in a post-war era. My generation came right after the post-war era. And that's why I like and enjoy line out NPC era trains. But first, we've got to understand what is Lionel MPC era trains. What does all that mean? So, in 1969, uh, Lionel sold its tooling and the license to uh, a Lionel license to General Mills, which is a cereal maker, believe it or not. So they sold their license and tooling to basically a cereal manufacturer, uh, General Mills. At that time, in 1969, General Mills had a division called MPC, Model Products Corporation. And what MPC was, for anybody who was also a kid during that time period, uh, would know that MPC was a plastic model kit. You could go to your hobby shop, and you would have brand names like uh, Ravel, Earl, Lindbergh, MPC. Uh, so there was quite a few plastic model kits you could build as a kid. And I used to enjoy uh, building uh, kits of plastic model kits of trucks. And I got into doing some cars too. But right now they're super expensive. It's like it's crazy. You pay eighty dollars for a truck kit, and you still gotta buy the paint and glues and everything. You're into it for almost two hundred bucks by the time you're done. But <laughs> that's for another video. So now you understand what MPC is. So General Mills sold Lionel under its MPC division, and that's how the Lionel MPC name came to be, or how it became the known as Lionel MPC era. So the MPC era was from 1970 to 1986 is when it uh, ended. And during that time period um, it did change some things. Uh, some people weren't happy with how things changed. You know some stuff became more plastic but you have to understand that General Mills knew that uh, you know they were trying to get the kids into uh, o skill or O gauge trains back then. So they knew that uh, a typical kid is not going to be able to uh, afford, or the parents are not going to be able to afford a die cast locomotive. So they started coming up with more plastic stuff and more affordable stuff. And I think what uh, some people don't realize is a lot of the MPC era trains used post war parts or the same dies or the same molds as uh, post-war. So, for example, the MPC era GG1 is still basically almost the same thing as post-war. It still has die-cast body, stamped metal chassis, dual motors, dual pull-mold motors with magnet traction. It's a great runner. It's a no-brainer. And you can actually pick up a Lionel MPC era GG1 cheaper than post-war and basically have the same thing. So, it's, I think it's highly overlooked. Uh, but, the uh, General Mills during the MPC era did release 
or re-release a lot of the most of the post-war uh, steam locomotives. And there's a lot of beautiful, I think, locomotives that were made during the MPC era. Uh, you had the Blue Comet that was made. The 611 was made during the MPC era, way before it became more uh, as popular as it is now. And uh, the Daylight was released in MPC uh, during the MPC era as well. Uh, today, you know, MPC is not valuable. It's not sold after. But I'm not collecting it to be valuable. This is not my retirement plan. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I have it and keep it because it holds a special place in my heart and it's a memory as a childhood. And, and I still enjoy it. I, I run it once in a while and during the winter time or holiday season is when I run it the most. Not as much during the summer but during the holiday I find myself running my traditional way a lot more because it brings back memories of Christmas and all that stuff. And um, so I have fun with it. And that's what MPC was all about. It's, it was having fun. And my attraction to MPC as a kid uh, was the bright, brilliant colors, and so uh, I, I would, as a kid, instead of picking out, you know, names that were, you know, you would see on the train, I would be picking out uh, stuff that had these bright, beautiful colors, and be like, oh, I like that. Um, so it was the colors that were attractive. They had really cool, attractive colors, and I mean, they weren't the most prototypical thing at the time. Uh, they were not scale. Uh, most of it wasn't scale. And I think that's one thing that uh, people overlook MPC when they're looking for something affordable. You know, they're, they're like, oh yeah, I want to try and find something that's uh, affordable in MTH DCS or Lionel Legacy or TMCC. It's like, if you're looking for something affordable, that's not really the way to go. Uh, because you can't have all the bells and whistles and accept and expect something to be affordable. Um, and so, my advice is if you're looking for something affordable and you don't mind not having controls, look at the MPC era stuff. There's really nothing wrong with it. And um, most of your locomotives were single uh, motor, um, but they had bagged attraction and they would still pull. Um, like I said, the GG ones were still dual motor. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I know some people don't like it, but I, I liked it because I had it as a kid. And it may not be the most valuable thing in the world. It may never be valuable. I really don't care about that part. I, I enjoyed it as a kid. And I enjoy it now. To hold the memory, and we'll look at some of this stuff. Uh, we'll look at my layout. I actually built uh, a traditional layout dedicated to MPC era only. And I know some people are scratching their head about. Wow. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever done that before. Really built a layout just for MPC trains, but I've seen well, nicely done um, post-war. Uh, layouts and, and then high rail layouts like this. But I don't know if anybody's ever built an actual MPC layout. So, but we'll take a look at mine and we'll talk about it and talk about the th different things about the uh, Lionel MPC era. So, this is my Lionel MPC era layout that I built. I went ahead and decided to paint it in the traditional Lionel blue and orange colors. But I would say at least 90% of the stuff on here is uh, MPC era Lionel. All the track, I went with tube track. And we're going to talk about that here. Uh, this is all Lionel O gauge uh, tube tracks. So, I know people have asked the questions what's the difference between Lionel O gauge uh, tube track, 
the difference between Lionel a 27 tube track and this is Lionel by the way as well so the Lionel O27 tube track has a lower profile to it and you can quickly identify it by the brown ties so any Lionel track that has brown ties on it is O27 track O27 means that it, the track the curves make a 27 inch circle the O gauge track has a taller profile tra uh, rail on it uh, it's actually better to run on this stuff, but I do know people who still operate layouts using O27 Lionel track, believe it or not. And they love it. So it's all up to the individual operator and owner of the layout. And so you can quickly identify Lionel O gauge track because it would have black ties instead of brown ties. Uh, K Line made tube track, Menard still makes it. Uh, it's a great substitute for uh, line out tube track. However, being, you know, I already had the line out O gauge track and tube track, and that's what I used. Um, if you look over here, I think there is a couple pieces of K line in here. And how I know is K line track had um, two extra ties in it. You can see it here and here. So that's a K line track, and that's a K line track. Where the Lionel Straits only has three ties, the K line has five. I believe that's the only K two pieces of K line I have in there. Uh, for those who are considering buying. Lionel MPC or have Lionel MPC era trains you have to understand most of your diesel locomotives I'm not saying all of them but most of them such as uh, this preamble express over here have a single motor in it but it has magnet traction and the magnet traction is what helps uh, gain traction with the train to pull it without relying on two motors and it works very well as long as you're using tubular track if you decide to go with uh, like Atlas O or Gargraves it's not going to work so well for you so if you are one of those that have mainly uh, magnet traction locomotives and you want to change your track because you bought one um, MTH DCS or one line L TMCC or Legacy, then you're unfortunately the locomotive, the MPC era locomotive, is not going to pull as much as it once did because it will not gain any traction because it relies on magnet traction instead of rubber tires. So just keep that in mind when you're planning out what you want to do. A lot of the MPC era trains can be had for really cheap today. I mean, you can go out on eBay and, and you can buy box cars and tank cars and hopper cars you know, for between 10 to 20 hours, depending on what it is. But the, they're really reasonable. Uh, so if you're on a budget, uh, I wouldn't I would recommend going with MPC, actually. As I mentioned, uh, Lionel MPC did bring back some post-war stuff, so we have a MPC era remake of the post-war barrel car, MPC remake of the uh, railway post office car, that's an MPC era remake of the post-war board and milk car, there is an MPC remake of the ice house, so these are all MPC era remix of the post-war stuff. Now, I'm not going to say that you know, all of the structures or operating uh, buildings that they made were made with the best parts in the world. Some of these uh, operating accessories were good and some uh, did not work so well or broke very easily. 
so as I keep moving along here, here's an NPC Aero Trolley. But that's actually on a post war made trolley just well just like that. Basically that pat platform uh maintenance car is nothing more than a um post war era gang car number fifty. So they did use a lot of the they did use some of the uh post war parts and molds and, and die cast like uh into the MPC era. During the MPC era, uh Lionel came out with uh building kits. Uh, I I really enjoyed making them. So these right here actually came in a as a plastic kit form because you gotta remember MPC was a model plastic company so uh, offering building kits was right up their alley since they were already offering you know model cars and plastic model truck kits and even this building here that's that's a plastic model kit as well this is also uh, a remake of the post-war era generator car so this is MPC era Ah, my favorite, the diesel horn shed. It was a step up from having no sound at all. So here we have three of the most common MPC era boxes. Uh, you have the uh, red with the white lettering, the white box with the red lettering, the white box with the black stripe, and red lettering. So here are three uh, boxes that th that you would have seen during the Lionel MPC era. Um, they're all special edition boxes basically. So uh, you had the Lionel Spirit of 76 uh, series that were in a special box. You can see it says commemorative series on there. Uh, one of my favorites was the uh, specialty car box. Uh, however, these were uh, quite pricey back then, if I remember right. But uh, they were one of my favorites to look at. And then the yellow box, which the yellow boxes are kind of rare. I'm not saying valuable, I'm just saying you just didn't see them a lot. Uh, but this the the yellow box was the Lionel limited edition series, and uh, so this this would be like stuff that were made in limited numbers. Now here you can see I stuck with mainly uh, old school transformers except for the MTH uh, Z controllers sitting over there. So we have an old school Lionel ZW. Uh, Lionel uh, TW and basically a starter set transformer that just that's just for the accessories such as the uh, uh, milk car and for the um, ice house to operate them I will have to say that the uh, Lionel MPC stuff really seems to like running on that MTH uh, Z750 so uh, for some reason they, they like it when I created this uh, traditional layout I wanted something a little bit different I wanted to incorporate a way to run three different trains and um, as well as having operating accessories and then uh, I don't know if anybody's ever done this before but I even uh, decided to do an elevated figure eight. <laughs> so, once again, not sure if anybody's ever done an elevated figure eight. But uh, as you can see, that's exactly what I've done. So we had this elevated figure eight. And then the uh, outside track. I have a couple different trains I run. I got a Penn Central GG1 train. I also run a Miss Liberty Central Jersey train as well. I change them out. 
and then uh, on the inside track um, I'll run my Preamble Express that I got as a kid in 1984. No, this is not the Preamble Express that Lionel just came out with. Lionel actually made the Preamble Express first during the MPC era. And as you can see, the, the bright colors I was attracted I really loved the Ontario uh, Northland hopper car. When I seen it as a kid, I had to have it. Same way with that bay line. Then you'll see a baby Ruth car sticking out of the bridge. These are all cars that really, I mean, there's just bright, brilliant colors that attracted me. And then I have uh, a trolley line that just runs back and forth. Okay. And then I have uh, this uh, MPC era maintenance car that also just runs back and forth. So uh, I have a lot of uh, um, operating action capabilities on this uh, layout. I can run three different trains. I can run uh, a trolley and a line-out platform car and then operate accessories as well. Alright, so people wanted to see a little bit of my collection here. And uh, so you can, uh, I'll just pan through here, you can see some of my line-out MPC stuff. And I really loved the chrome-plated tank cars that they did back then. And you, I, once again, I, I know it sounds like a broken record, but I was just attracted to the brilliant colors, the chrome-plated uh, tank cars, the uh, billboard reefers. I, I ate Cracker Jacks when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, my dad just happened to drink Pat's Blue Ribbon beer. He even had the neon sign for it. I mean, <laughs> uh, and then my grandmother, she always used uh, gold metal flowers. So this is stuff that, you know, you would actually see. And, uh, Back in my day, uh, you bought orange juice concentrated in a, in a tin can and you basically opened it and put it in a pitcher and added water and you mixed it up and that was your orange juice for the for the next couple of days. <laughs> it's kind of funny to remember that stuff. And, and then uh, when, I, when I was a kid, uh, kids uh, during my years of growing up, they would uh, do something called crank calling. They would call up stores asking, Hey, do you have Prince Albert in a can? And of course the store owner would say, Yeah, we got Prince Albert in a can. And then their response would be, Okay, well you better let them out. So, <laughs> yeah, the stuff that kids did during my time period. And uh, here's something constant controversial right here uh, something you'll never see line out do again is the uh, cigarette cars I remember when I first got this uh, my mom was not too happy <laughs> I don't like it I'm not taking up smoking I, I picked it up because I like the colors of it but still you know she wasn't happy but yeah, still let me have it anyway And uh, a couple of the cool pieces here. I, I like the auto carriers and just the different names that you see. Um, I know it's kind of glary, so sorry about that. Canada Dry. I mean, this is stuff. It was nice to see products that you could buy being put on a, a train car. All right, so we'll go through some white box stuff here. And, uh, I remember getting that VAT car, I really liked it. Funny thing is, she was okay with me having beer cars, but got upset with me having a cigarette car. Go figure. But, <laughs> uh, the way it was in the 70s. It was a whole different time period. But you can see some of the, the, the cool things. In Here's an animated car right here. So as this ran around the track, the, the cop would chase the hobo. 
Um, special edition cars. Here's a radioactive car that actually lights up as as it's being pulled around the track. Um, really like the Fort Knox gold car. So they they really had some cool things back in the day. Here's some more white box stuff. And uh, once again, trying to get this on camera for you guys. Now this Erica car, that's, that was pretty neat. That's actually got a tank car inside of it. And besides the scale size of it, that's actually prototypical. I mean, Erica really did have a tank car inside of a box car. So uh, might might want to research that. Once again, more plated cars. Um, back in the day, uh, you know, we had actual brand name gas stations like Golf and Sunoco, and now all you see is U.S. Gas and American Gas. All these all brand names I I've never heard of, but so this this is typically the stuff that. Um, that would attract me as a kid. Mm. My dad actually smoked El Producto. So once again, I, I think that the line-out NPC error is way too often overlooked, especially since a lot of the steam locomotives that they made during the NPC error used a lot of the same post-war parts. Uh, I'm not saying they were 100% made from post-war, I'm not saying that part, but the majority of it was. And even the diesel locomotives were pretty good. Even for being single motor, uh, the magnet traction worked very well. So uh, we'll uh, operate a couple things here to just to show you guys. Uh, and like I said, this is a line out MPC, Penn Central GG1. It still has the die cast metal body, stamped steel chassis, dual pull more motors, um, metal uh, pantographs. So it's, in my opinion, it's still a quality piece. So here we'll uh, operate the barrel loader. <laughs> So here with this piece you load up the ice in this little tray right here. It's just like the post-war version actually. And uh, well, I'll show it off anyway. Cause not, maybe not everybody's got the, this accessory. And this is a MPC era remake. As you can see, he's uh, shoving the ice in there. It's not always perfect, but there you go. We'll go ahead and load up uh, some milk cans in this. and It's just really no different than the post-war version, actually. It's got magnets and on the bottom of the milk can. And it's a pain in the butt to load, just like the, the post-war version. And... But we'll go ahead and shut off anyway. Why not, right? It takes longer to load it than it does to offload it because you got to have your cans lined up just right for it to go in. And once again, this is not a post war piece, this is a MPC remake. And, uh, MPC remade a lot of the post-war stuff over again. Well, not a lot, but majority of the steam stuff and a lot of the accessories. Alright, here we go.
That's it. I think if I was to complain about anything during the NPC area era, is that I wish they would have made better signals and bridges. But other than that, I just I really like the stuff. Um, it ran pretty good. Uh, for those who might consider it after this video, just understand that some NPC era trains came with metal wheels and some of the cheaper NPC era uh, rolling stock came with plastic wheels so you do have to be aware of that but other than that it's held up I mean this stuff a lot of this stuff is 30 to 40 years old and it's actually held up pretty well a lot of people said it was crap and it would fall apart but it hasn't now of course you did have the cheaper uh, line out NPC era starter sets they were all plastic plastic gears um, so those wouldn't last as long as some of the other MP higher end NPC stuff uh, <laughs> people are like higher NPC stuff is there even such a thing yeah I mean they did like the GG1 like I said it's that was pretty quality stuff, uh, MPC era and GG1. I, I, in my opinion, that's really quality stuff. And, uh, but this is a uh, O27 General Mills MPC era Lionel train set. All plastic, plastic gears. But it still runs. This locomotive. And this train set still runs. Uh, it came out in 1976, so, you know, 40 years later, 40 plus some years later, I guess you could say, it's it's still running. So if you're looking for cheaper OGH trains, don't be afraid to consider the Lionel NPC era. Uh, you can buy it really cheap, especially the rolling stock. Um, there's a, a, a selection of steam locomotives that are out there. As I mentioned, the, the 611 was made uh, during the MPC era, the Blue Comet, the, uh, Day, the Daylight. So there are iconic locomotives that were made uh, during the MPC era. As, not, as well as, uh, you know, smaller uh, steam locomotives. And some of, the, some of these uh, line out MPC era uh, Diesel and steam, smaller steam locomotives can buy it really reasonable for a quarter or a fraction of the price of MTH or uh, the line out TMCC or Legacy as long as you don't care about details uh, as long as you don't care that they're not to scale not a lot of details doesn't matter to you not having controls or sounds doesn't matter to you um, then have at it yeah, buy it. I mean, there's there's a couple things that had the sound of steam, I believe, um, later on during the MPC, but they used the rock tumble on some of the cheaper line. And I hope the video changes people's mind about the uh, the era of Lionel MPC. And if not, then that just leaves more for me to buy. <laughs> I'll buy it. I'll buy whatever you don't. That's fine. Uh, these more for me. <laughs> so, we'll leave you a video with everything up and running.